My friends, I'm terrified of other people. I was at a conference the other day. It was a conference for missionaries. And I was invited there by the head of the area. I had this sense that God was good and that he loved me. Then I got home and that entire narrative flipped on its head. I thought that God only loved me when I did what he told me to do. To me, that didn't sound like a relationship I wanted to be in. Being continually judged for not doing the right thing or not being the right person. Fortunately, I have a very persistent mother. I say that because we had about a 15 minute to half an hour debate on it. And finally, it clicked. It wasn't God who was judging me. It was my fellow men. After all, isn't the teachings of Christianity that God loved his children so much that he gave his only begotten son? It was my fellow men that judged me. It was my fellow men that expected things from me. And I found a thought that actually fit the situation quite well. God doesn't want your empty actions. God wants you. People expect your empty actions. God expects you. What I'm getting at here is that external expectations can crush you. They can absolutely demolish you. At this point, this is something that I've been trying to fix for about the past four years. And only now am I starting to understand it and only now am I starting to get it right. So this is going to take a crap load of time, but if it is not the most important thing, then it is most definitely in the top 10 things that you need to master that ability to not care about other people's opinions, to not care about the external expectations that can crush you. In my video, no one is coming. I argued that you mustn't lose yourself on the basis of kindness and that you should be on your own side. This in a sense is a reinforcement and an add on to that. People have a tendency to judge and persecute and individuals tend to care what other people think. And as I said, that can crush you, but only if you let it. Now, something you need to understand is that it's not entirely possible to not care about other people's opinions. It is, however, possible to choose whose opinions you care about. The true balance is caring about the opinions of those who are closest to you, but not letting others dictate what you do in your life. I'm not sure if you've realized this at this point, but I am an extreme advocate for individual freedom. And one of those freedoms is the freedom from others' opinions. Let me make a few basic guesses on some of the things that you desire in life. You want enough money and resources so that you do not have to be concerned whether you'll survive this next week, this next month, this next year, maybe even the entire lifespan that you have left. You want the ability to travel freely. You want friends who give a damn about your existence and you want to have a fulfilling life. Fantastic. You're human. Welcome. But now to have the ability to achieve one of these things, you do have to be free of other people's opinions. Let's use money as an example. You'll have people tell you that money is a finite resource and that you are greedy if you want it. This is incorrect on both fronts. Money is literally printed every day and is not tied to any finite valuable resource. And money is a tool to gain freedoms you wouldn't have otherwise. And I don't believe wanting to be free is greedy, my friends. If you were to believe in those ideas and to care about what other people think, then you wouldn't necessarily have the ability to gain the freedoms that money provides. The limiting factor is your caring about other people's opinions, not only just caring about their opinions, but caring about theirs more than your own. And sometimes people's opinions are destructive and aren't conducive at all to what you want in life. I'm not sure if you've ever heard about or seen crabs in a bucket. If one tries to get out, the rest will pull it down. And that is the situation quite a few people find themselves in. That was the situation that I was in and am only now getting out of it. 
To escape the trap of other crabs, you need to understand a few things. You need to understand what you want in your life. That's the starting point. Then from there, you'll need to understand what it will take to get you there. What type of people and media you need to surround yourself with to prime your mind correctly. You need to understand that people and media do influence the way that you think. And finally, you are able to choose the type of media and sometimes even the type of people that surround you. In terms of choosing the media you consume, that's the easy part. What type of YouTube videos are you watching? What type of books are you reading? What type of movies are you watching? But are these pieces of media priming your mind to where you need to go? or causing you to revert to a hopeless state. If the media is destructive, it'll do the latter. Then you need to start looking for positive self-improvement media that'll help you with the specific issue that you are dealing with. In terms of YouTube, just look it up in the search bar. Same thing for Netflix. Look for something that will be uplifting to you. And then for books, look for books that will be helpful to you. There's often a self-improvement and psychology section in bookstores anyway. But then comes the harder part of those that surround you. For example, I live with my folks at the moment, but I'm fortunate enough to have a family that isn't hell-bent on my destruction. Perhaps it's not your family that you're stuck with. Maybe it's your friends and or your boyfriend or girlfriend. In my video, I struggle to be alone. I encouraged you guys to try find and make friends. But I realized that that advice isn't only for those who are lonely within the sense of being alone, but lonely within the sense that you are being crushed by the people around you. But if finding new friends and new people to be around isn't an option for you at the moment, then you need to figure out a way to be on your own. Like I said in a previous video, I disappeared for a time being in terms of my social life in order to figure out a way to clear my mind. You might need to do the same thing. If so, then that's something you need to do ASAP. The quicker you get it sorted, the quicker you can re-enter into the social world. But maybe you're in the worst case scenario. You can't leave and you're stuck with assholes. Then there's a level of mental resilience that you need to build, my friend. The path to mental resilience is most definitely not an easy one, but it's necessary if you're stuck. A good place to start is with working out. After all, it's a strong body that can create a strong mind. If you can deliberately push yourself through pain to just get that extra rep to keep going despite the pain, then you're on the right track. Then from there, I'd recommend adding on meditation because meditation helps with focus. It helps you hone in on the things that are important and discard all the things that are not to zone out of the things that are not important. And then you might want to start journaling to think more clearly. Something I said in my video, keys to focus in the journaling section is it helps due to the fact that your mind and the writing are literally one thing. Only difference is the writing is a symbolic representation of what you're thinking. And sometimes you will doubt whether this path is going to be worth it. In that case, you need to doubt your doubts. I said it before, there is something necessary within a dogmatic state. It keeps you focused. If you are intolerant of the things that will destroy you, you can truly be free. When others start doubting you, don't waste your time trying to change their minds. Instead, think to yourself, this is a brother that is lost, one that I need to help. And I need to lead by example, because I can't force an idea down his throat. Show, don't tell. Once you have that resilience, then you can start putting your efforts into your dreams. You can start putting in the work that'll help take you there. And don't stop moving. Don't stop moving. The only circumstance in which you are allowed to stop is if you are resting so you can continue with energy for the continuing battle. Is this a lonely road? At first, yes, it is rather lonely. But over time, you'll start accumulating friends with the same type of drive and passion that you have. May not be on the same topic, but if you surround yourself with like-minded people who want to have a successful life, whatever that means to them and whatever that means to you, 
you will have a framework of people around you pushing each other. You will keep pushing each other because you see this is something worth achieving for them. And they will see this is something worth achieving for you. You'll push each other to keep going. You will skyrocket into things beyond your wildest dreams. Now, as I said before, you're going to find yourself in doubt. And you're going to find yourself more specifically in a lonely space of doubt. And have faith. Whether it be in God, like me and some other religious dudes, or with, whether it be this being worth it at the end, have faith. Keep going. Doubt your doubts. That way you can keep moving forward because your doubts are the things that are going to try destroy you. My brothers, I know fear of others. I know loneliness. I know hopelessness. But you never have to stay in terrible states. You have a choice to get out. I know it's not the easy choice, but it's a lot happier than the state that you probably find yourself in when you hit rock bottom. Other people can and will destroy you given the opportunity, whether it's on purpose or not. The devil is waiting to take you down. Whether you think that is metaphorical or literal, he's waiting there. He knows your weaknesses. He knows you. So you need to keep going to keep beating him. You need to find better people that can believe in you and who you can believe in. And you need to believe in yourself. You need to believe that you are worth the effort. Because if you're not worth it, who is? You need to believe that you can make it. And you need to believe that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Okay, I believe I'm recording, but just look at this. Look at this, this sexy man right here. He is, he looks like he's what, maybe uh, 20, 22 maximum, right? Then look at this child. Look at this child. Why, why, why did I shave? Why did I shave? I get the haircut, the haircut's fine. Like long hair's annoying, but why did I shave? I looked so much better. Like I know it looks like I have pubes on my face, but mate, baby face versus that. I prefer this dude. Honestly, I do. I like this dude better.